What's up, YouTube fam? First of all, I want to say thank you for clicking on this message. If you're part of our YouTube tribe, that means you're one of my subscribers. Thank you so much for seeing us as a trusted source of spiritual nourishment. Or if somebody sent this to you, or if you just stumbled up on this because I kept coming up in your feed, I just want to thank you also for taking the time to listen to this message. Now, you are about to listen to a message I taught um, at our church, Change Church. <laughs> and uh, the message is called Arresting Insecurity from a series I started called Insecure. I want you to be blessed by it. I hope it adds value to your life. Listen to me. I'm only making one request. If it blesses you, would you just share it with someone else? I want to reach as many people as possible. And I can't do that without your help. Enjoy today's message. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 6, the NIV version says this, y'all. It says, alas, sovereign Lord, I do not know how to speak. I'm too young. But the Lord said to me, don't say I'm too young. You must go to everyone that I send you and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you and I will rescue you declares the Lord. I want to talk from this subject in our time together, arresting insecurity. Arresting insecurity. Ladies and gentlemen, it could be said and suggested that the first step, listen to this, in solving a problem is seeing it. You can't solve what you won't see. Somebody put preach already. Just put preach right there. Yeah. yeah, the first step in solving a problem is seeing it. You can't solve what you don't see. We cannot address what we have not identified. This is why I believe it is one of Satan's strategies to keep us unaware of the issues that we are wrestling with that inhibit us from experiencing life as God intended. He knows, watch this, it's hard to experience God's best when we blind. In other words, listen to me, church, our success depends upon our self-awareness. Our success depends upon our self-awareness, and this is why it is incumbent and imperative upon every individual who wants to experience life like our creator and our designer God intended to adopt an attitude that says and admits and acknowledges there are things about me that I can't see that are hurting me show you right. <laughs> I said, there are things about me that I can't see that are hurting me. And this is an area I believe God wants to expose today because it is impacting people's assignment and inhibiting their ability to experience the flourishing, thriving life that our creator intended for us. It is an area, family, that is like a weed in the garden, choking out vision, choking out values, and choking out the vitality of our life. It is an emotional issue and an emotional epidemic that is wrecking havoc in the lives of society unbeknownst to people whose lives it's destroying. It's invisible, it's intangible, but it is undeniably impactful. I'm talking about insecurity. Yes, and some persons immediately when they hear that word, they dismiss the relevance of this revelation for them. And they think thoughts like, I'm not secure at all. This sermon is not salient for me. I got to click off and go watch somebody else who's talking about something that is relevant and pertinent for the season and space that I'm in in my life. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let me put some Bible in it. Yeah. You can't say you don't have the sickness if you don't know the symptoms. Woo. So before we say I'm not insecure, before we say there is not a slither of, a modicum of, a small amount of insecurity residing on the inside of me, before we dismiss it, at least let me reveal and expose the symptoms because insecurity doesn't show up looking like insecurity. 
Most sicknesses don't show up looking like the sickness. The sickness shows up looking like the symptoms. And when people don't understand this, they simply treat the symptoms, not realizing that that fruit is simply an expression of a root. And the root of insecurity often lives in a part of the soil of our heart that we can't see. You can see fruit, but you can't see roots. Woo, Lord, help me to see. Uh, I've gone through too much not to see. Sacrificed too much not to see. You broken me too much not to see. You taught me all of this, rearranged me, reconstructed me, corrected me, delivered me, humbled me, gone and give me everything you got for me. My pastor told me at the beginning of the year, this was the year of more. Well, since you want to do more, keep on doing more then. Do exceedingly and abundantly above all I could ask, think, or imagine. Imagine somebody put more in the chat. Yeah, God, show me me. Since, since show me me, show me things that are going to help take me from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Take the scales off my eyes. I want more than vision externally. I want insight internally. Lord, please show me me because insecurity can be hiding in a place in the soul of your heart and my heart and we not be able to see it. See, see, let's look at something called Jahari's window. I believe it's going to impact, uh, impact and it's going to express what I'm trying to articulate. So in, in Jahari's window, there are four types of self, okay? You got the first self. This is the open self. Uh, so put open self in the chat. Put it in the chat. The first type of self, this is the, the, the open self, okay? Open self. What's the open self? Open self is information that you know that, watch this, that you and both others know about you, okay? Right? Open self. Information that, that you and others know about you. I'm open. I like Skittles. I know I like Skittles. Starburst, really. Uh, and Skittles. Somebody give me some right now. If you got, uh, uh, start, I know it and you know it. Open self. Does that make sense? Open self. But then there's another self. It's the hidden self. This is not evil. It's just a fact, okay? This is information about you that you know but others don't know. These are things that you've chosen not to disclose. Make sense? Okay, then we've got the blind self. The blind self. What's the blind self? This is information about you that you don't know. Watch this, but others do know. Woo! Look at me. Please look at me. Look at me. <laughs> See the blind self? Okay, this is why in my book, Relational Intelligence, when I break down the four categories of relationships, this is why I still believe the friendship category is the most important one. Or it is equally as important as the mentorship category. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the people that are going to see the blind self are going to be primarily in the friend category. You say, Pastor Darius, what about my spouse? I'm married. Well, if you're married, your marriage partner should fit in the friend category. I hope you didn't marry an assignment. <laughs> Woo! Did you... <laughs> right? I, I hope you didn't marry an associate, right? I hope you didn't marry an associate. No, I hope you married a friend because friendship is the foundation of a healthy relationship because only friends can keep vows. Better or worse is only kept by friends. Only friends ride for people for better or worse. Only friends will look at you and say, you wrong, but you're still my friend. And I'm going to defend you and cover you in public. But when this is over, me and you are going to talk about this in private. Come on. Only friends can keep the marriage of us. And so this is why your friends and your spouse, that selection is so important. That's why it's so consequential. Because this is the person that's going to have enough access to you to see things about you you don't see. And then you got the unknown self. This is information about you that you don't know and others don't know either, but God knows. That God has to use seasons, situations, 
and circumstances to unearth. Come here, Jonah. He takes a well to show you the unknown self. <laughs> Are y'all here? Come here, Moses. It takes a calling to conjure up the unknown self. See, because sometimes your calling puts a demand on your life that exposes a deficiency that would not have been exposed if you weren't called. Come on. We're going to talk about Moses a little bit later in this series, but when God called Moses, right, God's calling exposed a speaking deficiency. Moses said, I'm slow of speech. That doesn't matter if I'm not a speaker, but sometimes a calling puts a demand on, on you and exposes the deficit you didn't know you had. Are you following me? So here it is. Insecurity can live in any of these four selves. But for the average person, insecurity is living in the blind self and in the unknown self. Because insecurity doesn't always show up looking like insecurity. Now, you do have some people who are operating with a degree of self-awareness and honesty and, their tra and transparency, and they've gotten delivered from the opinions and the perspectives of people, so they all in the open self, and they're telling people, they're telling their friends, they're telling their colleagues, I'm struggling in this area. I'm struggling with my weight. I I'm struggling with my age. I'm struggling with my competence. Come on. I I'm struggling with my clarity. I feel like I'm in a season of life where I should be clearer than I am right now, and I'm not, and I'm feeling guilty about that and confused about that. I, I'm, I'm struggling, watch this, with my progress. Where, where I feel like I should be much further along in this season and I'm watching people, I'm not hating God, but I'm just stating and I'm watching people who have not been given the degree of gifting that you've given me, yet at the same time they seem to be having an impact that I'm not having. Some people are here, but most people aren't here with their insecurity when they feel insecurity, if they know it's insecurity, they hide it. Woo! But most people are living here, blind to it or unaware of it. But what happens is, are y'all ready for this? Are y'all, I think y'all bored. Uh, if you're not bored, say preach. It, right in the chat. If you're not bored, say preach. And put an exclamation point too if you're not bored. I hope you're learning something. Here's the issue. The roots of insecurity live in the unknown self and blind self. But the fruit of insecurity show up in the hidden self and the open self. Did you hear what I just said? And, and so you got people who are in your life that are dealing with all of this fruit, and they don't know where the fruit is coming from. But the fruit is coming from roots that are over in these areas. So they're dealing with the fruit of hypersensitivity and, and volatileness. Come on, and anger and jealousy. And they're like, where is this coming from? But you don't even realize that that's just fruit that's coming from roots of insecurity that are in this other self. And sometimes the root is over here and they don't even know that I'm really not angry, I'm insecure. I'm really not territorial, I'm insecure. I'm really not jealous, I'm insecure. I'm really not sad, I'm insecure. I'm really not scared, I'm insecure. You know you can write, but why aren't you writing? If you know you can write, but you're not writing, what's going on? If you know you deserve the promotion and you're not applying, what's going on? If you know you could start it and do it, why haven't you started and done it? What's going on? Now, all over here, we got all kinds of excuses in terms of why we're not doing it, right? It's like, you know, the time is not right. And sometimes that's the case and this isn't right and that isn't right. But sometimes the root is over in the blind self and in the unknown self. Am I making sense, y'all? <laughs> And so the issue with this area of insecurity is not just that it affects and infects our peace, it also gets in the way of us carrying out our purpose. We've got to arrest insecurity, not just so that you'll have peace, 
but so that you'll have purpose. We've got to arrest insecurity, not just so that we can feel better, but so that we can do better. We've got to arrest insecurity, not just so that we won't suffer with apathy, but we've got to arrest insecurity so we can carry out our assignment. We must arrest insecurity because insecurity is an assassin, and it is sent by the enemy to assassinate our assignment. Did you hear what I just said? When the enemy cannot assassinate the assignment with immorality, the enemy assassinates the assignment with insecurity. When the enemy cannot assassinate, you got it. When the enemy cannot assassinate the assignment with immorality, then the enemy will assassinate the assignment with insecurity. Makes you afraid to do what you gifted to do, trep uh, trepidatious about doing what you're anointed to do, and then when you do it, you do it timidly and not boldly, and you don't kill a giant, David, tiptoeing around it. I feel the Holy Spirit right there. I say, you don't kill a giant tiptoeing around it. You don't kill a giant saying, I think I'm going to throw this rock and it's going to hit you in your forehead. You kill a giant by saying, you come at me with a sword and a spear, but I come at you in the name of the living God. I'm telling somebody, this is bold living season for you. It's time for bold living, not arrogance, not cockiness, but God for this. David said, you come at me with your weaponry. I come at you because I'm a worshiper and I got the Lord of hosts that is aiding and assisting me and he accomplished his assignment because he felt like his rock was enough. I don't even have time. <laughs> I don't even have time. See, until we arrest insecurity, you can't get clarity on your assignment. So some people are like, Pastor, what's my purpose? Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. And so, watch this. Some people can't get clear because insecurity is clogging the arteries of their discernment. Did you hear, did you hear what I just said? Uh, somebody say prove it. Somebody say prove it. Put it in the chat. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. It's in the text. The text we just read in Jeremiah, everything I just said is in the text. Everything I just said is in the text. See, we get the eavesdrop in Jeremiah 1 on a conversation that God is having with a gentleman named Jeremiah. Now, the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah was called a major prophet. It doesn't mean it had a major anointing. It just means that the compilation and the span of his writing is more exhaustive than other um, prophets. It means that God trusted him with more to say. Got me? So some books of the Bible are like smaller, right? Some prophetic books like Zechariah and Zephaniah, those are smaller books. They're called minor prophets, but some books are larger, like Daniel, like Ezekiel, like Isaiah, like Jeremiah. They're called major prophets because God said, I'm going to give you more to say. But I'm getting ready to show you, I'm sorry, that the people he gave the most to say to are the people he had to wrestle with the most to say it. The people, <laughs> the people he gave the most to say to are the people he had to wrestle with the most to say it. See, this is, this is a pattern that not always, but that often predicts the degree to which someone's going to be used by God. Because the people that are always audaciously and obnoxiously coming to you saying, I know what God said to me. He's going to use me. I'm going to take nations. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Are inconsistent with the pattern that we see in scripture regarding persons that God uses in that way. The people that had the most to say are the people that had the hardest time saying it. God had to wrestle the most with them. It's in the text. God, tell, God introduces Jeremiah to his assignment. Watch this. He's revealing to Jeremiah the reason he was created and inviting him to align his life with his will and his, with God's will and God's wishes. Watch this. And I believe this instance offers some insight onto those of you who are seeking clarity in the area of your calling, business, arts and entertainment, medical, uh, government, and entrepreneurship, uh, religious, uh, uh, schools, education. Watch this. God's calling is his invitation for your participation in the reason for your creation. Here's a thought. Your assignment will require some alignment. 
Your assignment will require some alignment. See, there are a lot of people who are making a lot of money. I don't know why this, this boldness. I think I'm just old. That's it. You get old, the filter's just gone. This is a no-cap community. Somebody put no cap in the chat. No cap. Here is, there are people are making a lot of money telling you, telling you that your assignment doesn't require any alignment. That everything you want to do is what you're supposed to do. That your assignment doesn't require putting some wishes to death. You don't hear what I just said. And keeping it on the altar. Y'all miss what I just said. I, did you, are you hearing that there are going to be some things you want to do with your life, some ways that you want to live out your life that aren't evil, but they're just inconsistent with God's intention for you. And when you hit those spaces and God reveals what he wants you to do in another season, you've got to be willing to lay aside your wishes and say like that, say like the Christ from Carpenter, uh, our Carpenter called Christ, and say, not my will, but your will be done. Your assignment requires some alignment. Y'all aren't talking to me in the chat. I said your assignment will require some alignment. It will require you putting some wishes and some preferences on the altar and then keeping it there. Abraham didn't just put Isaac on the altar. He tied him down. And when you give something to God, you got to tie it down because in a later season, that thing will want to get back up again. Yeah, if you know my story, you know I wanted to be a lawyer. I still watch court cases every now and then. I still believe I would have been a bad one. I believe the way I read books now on spiritual life and soul development and personal development, I believe I would have went at law the same way. That's how I am. If you don't want me to kill it, don't call me. Yeah, when I play basketball, if you don't want to play, don't call me. If you're playing around, don't call me. I don't play around. I got one gear. Go hard or go home. Leave me alone. I didn't just have to put that on the altar. I have to tie it down. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be uh, forward so somebody can get free. I'm trying to be forward so somebody can get, get free. I had to tie it down. So I'm looking at something I wanted to do, something I felt like I was gifted to do because I feel like I could do it. And I feel like I could do it well. Something that would have been more lucrative for me to do. Something that would not have come with the bubble that I have to live in as a religious leader. Something that my success would not be scrutinized. Because the only success that's scrutinized is religious success. Oh, gosh. Right? So, so that my generosity and my children would not be judged. It would have been a lot more convenient for me to do law. What I would have had to navigate through in this pandemic would have been different. But your assignment requires alignment. Not my will. Yours be done. Put it on the altar and tie it down. <laughs> Woo. Somebody put preach in the chat. Preach in the chat. Put it in there because I got a few people in here listening to me and they not helping me right now. I want, I want you to put preach in the chat. It was a case with Jesus. It'll be the case for us. We got to align our wishes, wishes uh, and our wishes and our will with God, who is our creator and designer, who knows what you're best suited for and knows what will give you the most joy. See, you can't conflate your success and your joy. See, I can do all this talk about what life would have been like as a lawyer, but if I was outside the will of God, I could have had all that and no joy. I could have had all that and been a drunk. I could have had all that and my kids hate me and my family be torn apart. I could have had all of that and God would have looked at all this talent that I had and say, now nah, I gave you the talent so it's really mine. You stored in it. So you do with it what I tell you to do with it. And so I'm only going to breathe on what you've been called to. 
I'm getting ready to slap some somebody hand in the air. <laughs> I said, I'm only going to breathe on what you've been called to. So even if you gifted for it, when you step outside of what I've called you to do with the gift that I've given you, I'm going to stop breathing on that. And favor's not going to be on that. And it's not going to be as fruitful and as lucrative as you think because it's not you, it's me. <sighs> See, sometimes we can't walk in God's calling because we created our own. <laughs> Somebody come up here and get me, right? <laughs> I said sometimes we cannot walk in God's calling <laughs> because we've created our own. And so God tells Jeremiah, I want to use you to do a reforming work. This is not an easy work. Somebody else has a different kind of work, but you got a reforming work. And it's going to be hard because you're trying to change people's mind and you try to free them from patterns of behavior that they think of me. Because all, ass watch this, all assignments are not created equal. And so when God gives Jeremiah his assignment, this is what I want you to do. I want you to see how Jeremiah responds. He responds with two phrases. It's in verse 6. They're going to put it up on the screens for you. Verse 6, it says, I don't know how to speak. And I'm too young. Y'all missed it. God calls Jeremiah. He says, I'm going to use your door reforming work. And Jeremiah says, I don't know how to speak. And I'm too young. He says, I'm going to use you to pull up and to pluck out and to tear down. I don't know how to speak. And I'm too young. God invites Jeremiah to use his life for his glory and for his purposes. And Jeremiah responds with his insecurity. When God calls, what's answering? Because <laughs> sometimes when God calls, insecurity answers. Now watch this. Watch this now. Watch this. So notice, he says, I don't have the ability. I can't speak. And I don't have the experience. I'm too young. Are y'all following me here? I don't have the ability, and I don't have the experience. Listen to this. And you got a whole nation of people that's waiting on him to say yes. Who is being held up because you're holding up? Who's being held hostage because you're holding up? Listen to this. He's talking to God about stuff that he's projecting on God. That's not a priority to God. He's like, I'm too young. God's like, I ain't say nothing about that. I can't speak. God's like, I ain't say anything about that. In other words, Jeremiah, you're confusing my criteria. You think your criteria and my criteria are the same. <laughs> so his insecurity is attempting to assassinate his assignment. If God would have let him off the hook, he would have left it. If God would have been like, okay, you're right, we would not be reading about him. If his insecurity would have got in the way, we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't know how to relate to him when he said, I said to myself, I would speak no more about him or not make mention of his name. But his word was within me like a burning fire shut up in my bones. If he had let his insecurity assassinate his assignment, we would have been robbed of the revelation of Jeremiah 29, 11, when in the midst of uh, decay and destruction and despair God sends a word I know the plans I have for you plans not to harm you but to prosper you plans to give you a hope and the future we would have gotten none of that if he would have let his insecurity assassinate his assignment so Jeremiah steps into his calling I think we give ourselves too much credit not because watch this Jeremiah steps into his calling not because of his greatness but he steps into his calling because of God's goodness he stepped into his calling because God wouldn't quit calling yeah. 
He stepped into his calling because God wouldn't leave him alone. He stepped into his calling because God wouldn't let insecurity answer for Jeremiah. He stepped into his calling because God refused to allow Jeremiah to operate on a level that was less than God's best for his life. Let me wrap this up. Because <laughs> insecurity is an assassin, everybody. What does it do? Insecurity, number one, it assassinates our sanity. Jeremiah is experiencing unnecessary anxiety about something he's born for. Because insecurity makes you worry unnecessarily. What if they don't like me? What if it doesn't go well? What if I get up there and bomb? What if it doesn't work? It's going to be embarrassed. What if people see it? I'm going to have to answer questions. So his insecurity is assassinating his sanity. His insecurity, number two, it sabotages our relationships. We feel like others are going to abandon us or, uh, or, or, or not constantly and consistently, consistently invest in us. And what happens is that insecurity causes other people to overcompensate. And so when we're supposed to be a shalom bringer, we become a life taker. We're supposed to bring shalom to people's life. We're taking shalom out of people's life because insecurity assassinates your assignment because purpose adds value. It doesn't take it away. Walking in purpose makes us an asset to other people's lives, not a liability. And number three, insecurity arrests your success. It not only gets in the way of us accepting our assignments, but it impacts the way you execute your assignment. Insecurity causes you to execute your assignment with timidity. timidity. It's the difference between humility and timidity. And Paul had to tell Timothy this, didn't he? He said, Timothy, come on, man. I know you're young. But God didn't give you the spirit of fear. Power, love, and a sound mind. Y'all, I'm out of time. I'm not out of message, though. <laughs> I'm out of time. I'm not out of message. I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to come back next week and I'm going to give you part two of this. Huh? Yeah, because I got so much, I can't even drop the rest on this you right now. The rest of this on you right now. Listen to me. Pastor, why are you going to stop there? How are you going to tell me to arrest it? I'm going to do that next week, but here it is. Remember, you can't solve something you can't see. I want you to see it. So here's my question How's your sanity? How are your relationships? And how are you executing your assignment, your success? Because maybe there is a little insecurity. It just hadn't showed up looking like insecurity. One of the messages I'm going to teach in this series is, is called how to be big, how to, uh, uh, trying to be big when little got you. Because you know what arrogance is? Insecurity. It's just insecurity playing dress up. <laughs> Look, he think too highly of himself. They think too highly of themselves. They really think too lowly of themselves. They don't know it. So arrogance is showing up in the, un, in the open self, but really is insecurity in the unknown self. Woo, God's going to break that off you. We need you to walk in your purpose. I need you. God gave you a gift. You owe me that. He gave you your gifts to the body. It's for his glory, but it's to serve his people. And I don't care what line of work you're in. I'm not talking about the religious space because we got so many planting church, so many people planting churches and God wants people to be planting churches and planting businesses. I got to do a whole teaching on that. Fivefold ministry, the apostolic entrepreneurial anointing. Good people doing God's work in the public sector for common good. Good people doing God's work in the public sector for common good. World changers. That's what we raise up. Yeah, that's who this church for. We help as many people as possible change their life so that they can change the world. World changers. That is what we do around here. I feel the Holy Spirit. I want to pray a prayer of deliverance. 
I don't think we believe in that anymore. You can't believe in the Jesus of the Bible and not believe in deliverance. We believe in therapy and coaching and counseling. We, we recommend, we farm out, we do a little bit of that here. But we also believe in miracles. Glory that God can do what therapy can't. And he can do some things immediately and expeditiously. And I'm going to pray that the stronghold of insecurity is broken off of you. It's assassinating your assignment. So, Father, right now, I pray in the name of Jesus for everyone that is woo, wrestling with this and they don't even know it. It's, it's attacking and assassinating their, their sanity. It's sabotaging their relationships and their success. So I pray that the God who sets people free will set us free from the web of insecurity. And as you do so, may it be said of us as it was said of the early church, these are they that have turned the world upside down. In Jesus' name, amen. Whoever you are, wherever you are.